Okay then. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you're all doing well. So today we're going to be taking a look at perpetual inventory. As you know, I'm Adam and I'm part of the account management team and I'm joined once again this morning by consultant James Sharp. I'll pass you over to James in just a second and he'll take you through the agenda for this morning. But first, just a bit of housekeeping. So if you've been on any of our webinars before, you know that we ask that you direct any questions to me after the webinar and this just helps to save time and make sure that we don't overrun. I'll stick my contact details up on the screen at the end of today's presentation. So do feel free to give me a call or an email with any questions that you might have. Also, as per usual, we will be recording this morning's session and it'll be available to view on our website in the very near future. So all in all, we're looking for this webinar to last around 25 minutes. All right, so if you're ready then, James, I'll pass over to you and we'll get going. Thanks, Adam. So in this webinar, we're going to be covering perpetual inventory. So what that is, is the different ways that you can run a stock take. If you've got lots of items and you're a business, items get missing, go missing, get broken over time. So annually, quarterly, monthly, however often you want to do it. Businesses do stock take just to make sure they've got as much stock as they think they have. So there's three ways you can run accounts. You can run account for your full inventory. So if you've got 100 items, then you'd count all 100 items at once. Uh, you can do it by location. So you could say, right, I just want to count this zone or this bin. Or you can count by classification. So classification is when you break up your items into categories. So for example, high value, medium value, low value. And then you can assign each category account frequency. So counting the full inventory is the easiest way to do a stock take. It's probably best if you have fewer items if it's a, a smaller business or they have fewer items then counting a full inventory might be the easiest and best way to do it so it's two stages <clears throat> firstly you do the warehouse physical inventory journal which is where you view how much stock the system thinks you've got and then you enter how much stock you've actually got and then you register those adjustments and then the second part is the item journal where you actually post those adjustments. So it's the item journal that actually triggers the movement. And you've also got a printed document and the printed document is what can be given to the person on the shop floor to actually write just in pen how many of each item you've got. So I'll show you now how that works. So if we go to um, warehouse physical inventory journal we'll be able to select our batch but before that we'll create our warehouse journal template so you'd have a template for each location that you want to count um, so here we can see our journal templates we've got here here we've got one uh, PSY physical inventory journal and if we look at the source code uh, we can see that this is for the warehouse physical inventory journal which is the journal that's used for the stock take. Uh, if we go to navigate and then go to batches, this is where we can create a batch for each location. <clears throat> so we're only going to use one location in this video, that would be the Birmingham location. So this location's got two zones and lots of bins, but it's just one location. If we wanted to count from other locations, then we create another batch for that location. And the locations have to be directed, put away and pick. So once we've got our batch set up for the location, we can then start doing the stock take. Go to warehouse physical inventory journals. So we, we're it's taking us straight into our Birmingham batch, but that's how you change batch if you wanted to. Um, so we're just gonna press calculate inventory, enter our warehouse document number, That's okay. And that's going to pull all of our items into a big long list. Because as I said, this way of counting is to count everything. So this is all of our stock. If we've got any items that aren't in stock, they won't appear in this list. So we won't have any zero lines. And let's say if we've got two zones and we've got five items in one zone, but nothing in the other zone, there won't be a line for that zone with nothing in. If there's more than one zone and more than one bin with items in, then 
as you can see in this example, we've got the keyboard and it's listed twice. That's because we've got 37 in zone one bin A and three in zone one receiving. So sometimes items can be listed twice if they're in spread across bins and sometimes items aren't listed at all if they're not in a bin, if we don't have any stock. So this is how much stock the system thinks we've got of each item. So we've got 37, 3, 38, 15, 69, 49, 5. Um, so now comes the job of actually clarifying that. So, so someone, <clears throat> maybe the person who's on the PC, maybe someone on the shop floor, needs to go and actually check by literally counting how many of each we've got. Uh, so the best way to do it is to use a printed document. If you press print and tick show quantity calculated and then print to PDF, gives a really nice document that you can print out and you can give this to someone on the shop floor and say, right, okay, can you please count how much of each item we've got? So we think we've got 37, have we really got 37? We think we've got 15, have we really got 15? Um, the drawback of having this quantity calculated column is that if people were feeling lazy, they can just copy it across and just say, right, we think we've got 37, we've got 37, we thought we've got 15, we've got 15. And you don't know whether or not they've actually counted it. So how I'd probably suggest doing it is to print it and to not tick the show quantity calculated and then when you print a PDF you don't have that column and it means that whoever does the stock take has to actually count they can't just copy it across so that's probably the best way to do it so they print this out they go onto the shop floor they write in the column on the right how many of each we've got and then we can override this with how many we've actually got so this is how much the system thinks we've got 37 then we can say well we thought we had 37 we've actually got 36. So that quantity column populates the difference and then that is going to become the adjustment. So we thought we had 38, we've actually got 37. And we thought we'd got 49, but we've actually got 50. So when we had 37, when we thought we had 37, but we actually had 36, it's created a negative one. When we thought we had 38 we've got 37 it's created negative one and when we thought we had 49 but we've actually got 50 it's positive one uh, so let's say we're done we can press register and that's going to register those adjustments but it doesn't actually post the adjustments so that's the first stage then the second stage is go to the item journal where we actually make the adjustment so go to our item journal, edit the journal, and navigate, calculate warehouse adjustment. Enter the document number, and then this is gonna pull through all our outstanding warehouse adjustments. So there could be others here, but because we've only run this process, it's just pulled those. So we've got negative adjustment one, negative adjustment one, positive adjustment one. When we post the journal, that is when the stock gets moved. And that's it for counting your full inventory. You have a look how much stock the system thinks you've got, print the document if you want to, you override the quantity with how much you've actually got, system calculates a difference, post your item journal, and that's it. But let's say you're not gonna do all the stock take at once, you just wanna count for one location, or let's say you are gonna do all the stock take at once, but you've got five people to do the stock take and five locations, you might wanna split up um, just, just split that up so you could have one printed document for each location and then each of the five people could do their location. So it's the same process, you still do the warehouse physical inventory journal, you still use the calculate inventory function, you still register the adjustments, you still use the item journal, uh, you just filter the warehouse physical inventory journal on that location, what the location that you want to do. So if we go to Whereas physical inventory journal again. And bear in mind that you have to type in type in like this W H S E dot P H Y S dot I B N T dot journals. If you type in it doesn't come up. So just something to bear in mind. Um, so I'll run it again, do the same process, calculate inventory enter our warehouse document number 
but we're going to do some filtering. So we're going to say, right, okay, well, I just want zone one, BNA, press OK, and then that is just going to show us the lines for zone one BNA. So we could then print, we won't take show quantity to show, show quantity calculated, uh, print to PDF, and then we could just give this to someone and just say, right, can you just count this bin? And if we press uh, this corner tile here and delete, and then calculate inventory again, we could then set what well, that to zone one, bin B. And then we could give this to somebody else if we print to PDF. And then someone else at the same time could be counting this bin. Um, so we'll say that, well, we thought we had 115, but we actually had 114, so negative one, register. And then it's the same process again, just the item journal. Edit, actions, calculate where it has adjustments, document number, okay. And then it's at this point where we press post that it actually makes that negative adjustment. <clears throat> so that was how to count by location. It's the same process as when you count the full inventory, you just basically filter on that location. But both of those counting methods suggest that all the items are of equal value, and they might not be. A lot of time in a business, 20% of the stock is 80% of the value. So you might have high value, medium value, low value items. So for that, you'd use count by classification. So count by classification um, is run by counting periods and counting frequencies. So your counting periods split up your high value, medium value, low value, and then you'd assign each one of those categories a frequency. So maybe 12 times a year if you wanted to count it monthly, four times a year if you wanted to do it quarterly, or once a year if you wanted to do it annually. Once you've set up your counting periods and count frequencies, you then assign those to your items, and then you can run your warehouse physical inventory journal again, but instead of the calculate, uh, Instead of the calculate function it used before, this time you use the calculate inventory function, uh, and that shows you all the items that are due for count. And then you just register your adjustments, print the document which shows all the items that are due for count, and then uh, run the item journal to post the adjustments. So I'll just show you how that works. So if we go to physical inventory count periods, this is where we enter our categories. So you could break this up however you wanted to, but in this example, we'll say A for high value items, and the count frequency will be 12 times a year, which is every month. Uh, we'll have another one for B, which is medium value. Uh, we'll set that to four, so it's gonna count every quarter. And then lastly, we'll put C, which will be low, low value items and we'll have that count frequency as once a year. So they'll just get counted annually. So now those are set up, we can then assign those to the items. So this is just a demo company I've set up for training demos and things like that. And it's supposed to be a computer hardware company. So we've got, well, it sells food as well. Um, we've got, Peripherals at the top, so uh, keyboards and mice, then we've got headphones, and then we've got Apple Macs. So in this example, I'm gonna say the keyboards and the mice are the low value items. The headphones, slightly more expensive, are gonna be the medium value items, and then the Apple Macs, much more expensive, are gonna be the high value items. So because they're high value, we wanna count them more frequently, just to make sure they're not going missing and things like that. So if we do the item card, and look at the warehouse tab, we'll set the physical inventory counting period code to C. When we click off that, it says 
if you change your physical inventory count period code, which is this, uh, the next count period start date here and the next counting end date here um, will be calculated. Do you want to still change the physical inventory count period code? So yes. So I've set the work date on this company. No, I haven't done that yet. I'm just um, I'm going to set the work date on this company as the first of the year, just to make it a bit clearer. So, edit the item. So, <clears throat> physical inventory count period code is C, low value. Uh, we're at the start of the year. So the next counting period start date and end date is from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. So what that's saying is it needs to be counted this year because it's just annually. So between the 1st of January and the 31st of December. So next item, same again. So this is also a low value item. We'll get the same message and again, it must be counted this year. Uh, mice, uh, mouse, sorry. Um, this year, mouse, low value, this year, because it's annually. Next is the headphones. So these are medium value items. So I'll set that to B. And we said that it needs to be counted four times a year. So it needs to be counted quarterly. So the count period that it needs to be counted in is between the 1st of January and the 31st of March, so in the first quarter of the year. And we'll set the headphones, more headphones, we'll set that to B. And another pair also B. So we get the same date. Apple Mac, uh, high value items, we'll set that count period code to A. So we can see the period it needs to be counted in is between the start of January and the end of January because we said it was a count frequency of 12 times a year, which is monthly. So it needs to be counted this month. Uh, also this month and last one it's this month as well now these are different items so we, we won't put a count period on everything just on a few items so if we go to our warehouse physically or inventory journal again instead of clicking the calculate inventory which counts everything we're going to go to the actions tab and click calculate counting period and this shows us everything that's due for a count so nothing has been counted since we assigned the count period so everything's due for a count um, these can be counted any time this year but they still need to be counted so these uh, the b low value items they need to be counted this quarter and a high value items they need to be counted this month uh, if we click this uh, corner box here, it'll select everything and press OK. So you select the lines that you want to count. So we're going to count all of them and we'll press OK. Enter add document number. So that's pulled them all into here. Uh, again, if we want to, we can do our printed document. And someone can take this away and count it and then bring it back and then we can input it on the system um, when you do a stock take you might have as much stock as you think you have so there's no need to do the item journal so in that case you just register and that means you've done it and everything's okay so now what I want to show you is if we change the work date if we change the work date to next month if we run the warehouse physical inventory journal again and calculate the counting period the um, medium value and low value items well the, the low value items have already been counted this year so they're not due for count until next year and the medium value items have been counted this quarter so they're not going to be due till next quarter in april so because we're just in february now it's only the high value items that need to be counted so if we select the items that we want to count and we press ok
they'll appear here and we'll just say that we've got as many as we think we have so we'll just register uh, go to March now and calculate counting period and again it's just the high value items because they're monthly uh, we'll select all of them and press OK. If all the lines you've selected don't appear in the list, that's because you don't have them in stock at all. Um, but there's some of all of these in stock, which is why they've all appeared. So register that. So that was March. So now, next month is going to be April. So if we change that to April, our medium value items will be due for count. But our high value items will be due for count as well. So if we go to calculate counting period, so the high value items are due for count every month, but the medium value items are due for count every quarter because we're now in the next quarter. They've pulled through because they're due for count as well. So I press corner tile. Okay. Okay. Delete a blank line, populate a blank line, and register. So if we were to go to May now, and see what's due for count. The median value items aren't because they've been counted this quarter and we're still in the second quarter. So it's just the high value items because they're due every month. Um, we haven't seen the low value items yet because they've been counted this year and we're still in the same year. If we set the work date to next year, and see what's due for count. Then we'll see our low value items. Um, if you do want to see when something's next due for count, <clears throat> you can view the item and it'll show you when it was last counted and then the period in which it needs to be next counted. So the low value items have only been counted once at the start of 2018. So the next count is next year, 2019. It can be counted any time in the year as long as it's counted in that year. And then our medium value items were last counted in April. Uh, so they need to be counted in the next quarter, the following quarter. And then our high value items were last counted in April, so they need to be counted in May. So that's it for counting by classification. So essentially you break up your items into categories, however you want to do that. You assign them account frequency, which can be however often you like. Uh, you assign those counting periods and counts frequencies to items. You can run the warehouse physical inventory journal to see what's due for count. You can run your printed document, which will show you all the items that are due for count. Uh, register your changes if everything's the same, but if there are any adjustments, you change that quantity. The same way as um, if you count your full inventory or you count your location, you just can't change that quantity, run your item journal, and then um, calculate warehouse adjustments and post it and then again it's, it's always the item journal that triggers the adjustment when you register no stock will actually move you have to pull them into the item journal and then post the journal so thanks for listening everyone and i'll pass you back over to adam great stuff thank you very much james i hope you all found that interesting and useful as i mentioned earlier if you do have any questions please take note of my contact details on the screen now i'm more than happy to help you out with anything that you've seen this morning so give me a call or just drop me an email our next Nav Know How webinar is on the 4th of October, where we'll be looking at our new product, NavLinks. Keep your eyes open for more information and details on that soon. Also, look out for an email about our upcoming customer event, which is on the 13th of November. It's shaping to be a really good day, so I do highly recommend that you look on the website for more information on that. Once again, thank you for being with us this morning. Have a great day, and we'll see you again soon. Cheers.